In this segment, we'll start a detailed discussion of dynamic programming. We'll begin by defining the basic problem, which is an infinite horizon intertemporal optimization problem subject to constraints. We'll then define the value function, which is the supremum of the set of all attainable payoffs. And we'll see how this value function can be represented in a recursive form. And we'll define the optimal policy correspondence. And this will set the stage for the principle of optimality, which we'll discuss in the next segment. So let's start with the basic problem. Let x be a metric space and x0 a point in x, which we'll interpret as the initial state. And the objective is to find a sequence of states, xt, all of which belong to x, such that the sequence maximizes the sum of discounted payoffs shown on the slide, subject to the constraint that xt plus 1 must lie in the image under gamma of xt, and gamma here is a self-correspondence on x. x is referred to as a state space, and x0 as an initial state. Gamma is a self-correspondence on x that's called the transition correspondence. Given any x0, any sequence xt, that satisfies the constraints xt plus 1 is in the image under gamma of xt, for all periods t, is called a feasible plan. The function u, which we are allowing to depend on both xt and xt plus 1, is referred to as the one-period return function, and delta, assumed to lie strictly between 0 and 1, is called the discount factor. We'll assume throughout that for any feasible plan, the limit as t goes to infinity of the sum of discounted one-period returns from 0 to t is well defined. The boundedness of u is clearly sufficient but not necessary for this, and we are allowing for the possibility that this limit might be infinite, but we are assuming that the limit exists. The 5-tuple, consisting of the metric space x, the initial state x0, the transition correspondence gamma, the one-period return function u, and the discount factor delta, is referred to as a standard dynamic programming problem. And it's useful to define a class of problems given x, gamma, u, and delta that differ only with respect to the initial state. And we call this set D. So this is a class of standard dynamic programming problems that are all identical except for possibly the initial state x. And note that if you have a standard dynamic programming problem and you follow a feasible plan, then in every period t, you face a problem that belongs to the same class as in every other period t. Now let omega of x denote the set of feasible plans that have initial state x. So omega of x is just the set of sequences xt that satisfy the requirement that x1 is in the image of x under gamma and xt plus 1 is in the image of xt under gamma for all t. We'll use capital U to denote the payoff that one obtains if one starts from x and follows a feasible plan xt. So u of xt x is just the initial one period return plus the discounted sum of all subsequent one-period returns. And we define the value function v of x as the supremum of this set of attainable payoffs. So u is the set of attainable payoffs if our initial state is x, and v of x is the supremum of this set of attainable payoffs. Now v of x may or may not be attainable using a feasible plan. If it's attainable, we say that the problem has a solution, and in this case we can replace soup with max in the definition here. Now we'll state and prove the main result for this segment. Consider any class of problems, D, defined by x, gamma, u, and delta, any initial state x0 in x, and any feasible plan x star in omega of x0. If v of x0 is equal to the payoff that one obtains by following x star t starting from x0, then x star t must be an optimal plan. Remember, v is the supremum of the set of attainable payoffs. Now if this is the case, then we can express v of xt recursively as follows. v of x0 is equal to u of x0 x1 star plus delta times v of x1 star. And for every subsequent period t, v of xt star is equal to the one period return u of xt star xt plus 1 star plus delta times v of xt plus 1 star. Furthermore, if u is bounded, then the converse holds. In other words, if we can express the value function in the recursive form shown, for some feasible plan x star, then that feasible plan is in fact optimal. So let's prove this. We'll first show that if x star is an optimal path, then the value function can be expressed in the recursive form. So note that if x star is an optimal path, then the payoff that one obtains by following x star must be at least as great as the payoff that one obtains by following any other feasible path xt in omega of x0. Now consider any path x2, x3, and so on that is feasible if one starts from x1 star. Then x1 star followed by x2, x3, and so on 
must be feasible given x0, since we can transition to x1 star from x0, and the path x2, x3, and so on is feasible starting from x1 star. So we can take the inequality at the top of the slide and replace the right-hand side with this particular feasible path, x1 star, x2, x3, and so on. And that gives you the inequality at the bottom of the slide. Now notice that the first one-period return is identical from these two feasible plans, so we can eliminate that. And if we divide both sides by delta, we get the expression here. You should verify that that's in fact the case. Now notice that both sides of this inequality describe payoffs that one obtains from paths that start from x1 star. In one case, on the left, you are following x2 star, x3 star, and so on. And on the right, you are following x2, x3, and so on. Both these paths are feasible, starting from x1 star. And what this inequality tells you is that sticking to xt star yields at least as great a payoff as any alternative plan. And so therefore, sticking to the plan x2 star, x3 star, and so on, starting from x1 star, must be optimal since the payoff from this is at least as high as that from any other feasible plan starting from x1 star. So from the definition of the value function, we see that v of x1 star is simply the payoff that one obtains from the plan xt star starting from x1 star. Now remember that we're assuming that the plan xt star is optimal from x0. So v of x0 is equal to the payoff that one obtains from this plan. And this is equal to the one period return from following this plan plus delta times v of x1 star. To get this, we're using the expression for v1 x star that we just obtained, which itself is equal to the left side of the inequality at the top of the slide. And if you recall how we got this expression, we did so from the left side of the inequality at the bottom of this slide, after removing the one period return and dividing by delta. And if you put those facts together, you should see that v of x0 is equal to the expression shown here at the bottom of the slide. Now you can complete the proof by induction, what we've shown is that if a path is optimal from x0, and if you follow it for one period to reach x1 star, then the continuation of that path is optimal starting from x1 star. Now you can easily apply this reasoning to show that if a path is optimal from xt star, then its continuation from xt plus 1 star will also be optimal once you reach xt plus 1 star. And this proves the first claim that we can express the value function in the recursive form shown. Now we need to show that if u is bounded, then the converse also holds. So suppose that u is bounded and v can be expressed in the recursive form as shown. Then v of x0 is just the one period return plus delta times v of x1 star. And we can keep substituting in this way so that after t substitutions, we get v of 0 equal to the expression shown on the slide. Now if you look at the last term in this expression, this must converge to 0 as t goes to infinity if u is bounded. Because if u is bounded, then v itself must be bounded, so this last term must go to zero as t goes to infinity. And as t goes to infinity, the first two terms just converge to the payoff that one obtains if one follows the path xt star. And so we see that v of x0 is equal to the payoff obtained from following xt star starting from x0. And this completes the proof of the theorem. We've shown that if u is bounded, and if v of xt can be expressed in the recursive form shown for some feasible plan x star, then that feasible plan must itself be optimal. Now we'll finish this segment by defining the optimal policy correspondence. Suppose that for any given metric space x, transition correspondence gamma, one period return u, and discount factor delta, the corresponding class of problems has a solution for each initial state x in the metric space. Let v of x denote the associated value function. We define the optimal policy correspondence P, which is a self-correspondence on X, as shown on the slide. So P of X consists of all points Y in the metric space that are feasible if you start from X, and that maximize the value of the one period return U of XY, plus delta times the value function V evaluated at Y. So if we start at X, the optimal policy correspondence tells us all possible values of Y to which we can transition if we want to stay on an optimal path. Now you should verify that if u is bounded, then any plan xt is a solution to this class of problems if and only if it satisfies the condition that xt plus 1 is in the image under p of xt for all periods t. Now this is very intuitive and quite easy to verify, but I leave the proof as an exercise. And I'll stop there for this segment.